I'm worried about Halo Infinite, but I don't want to be. I've been a huge fan of this franchise forever since Halo 2, then going back and playing the first one afterwards because uh, I was pretty young when the first one came out, but regardless, this is one of my favorite video game series of all time, and Master Chief and Cortana are two of my favorite characters in fiction of all time, hands down. Now, the series has moved a little bit away from Cortana with hints at her being in this game in the trailer, but what I want to talk about today is not if this game will be good, I can give you a little bit of that as well, but I want to talk about why this game has to be good. Now, I'm not a fan of the console wars. I'm not even talking about that. I think the people who actually legitimately care about the console wars are either A, extremely young or mentally ill adults who need to throw their entire self-value behind a company, or B, uh, people who can't afford the other one. Now, I'm not saying that in a douchey way. I'm just saying a lot of times people use uh, the console war stuff to justify why they only have the one, right? That's just been the way it's been forever. Uh, I don't care what you play on. I just enjoy games. And with Halo, this has always been a staple of the Xbox. This has always been something that Xbox has brought to the table that Sony didn't. Sony did try to bring it to the table with things like Haze and other first-person shooters, but they never really matched the iconography and iconic feel and brand status of Halo. But Halo has been on thin ice for a handful of years now with probably most of its fan base. Since the split with 343 Industries and Bungie, uh, Halo 4 was a very, very divisive game. I happen to be one of the people who loved Halo 4. I really did. I know that made some people who are hardcore Halo fans cringe, and I have my problems with it. I think it's too linear. I think it's too focused on the Prometheans, which are really obnoxious enemies. But I really love the story dynamics and the character interactions between Chief and and Cortana, and I loved the natural evolution of those two's relationship over time into that game. So I do hope that there's some stuff with that as well. And what I'm getting at with that is when 343 wrote that game, a lot of people were very upset by it. They didn't like Halo or Master Chief talking a little more like he did in the books or the expanded stuff, which is totally valid because a lot of people don't read that stuff if they play the games. And they didn't like the more linear uh, level design. I didn't really like that either. You know, there was a lot of stuff people didn't like, but Halo 5, I think, was unanimously regarded in a lot of ways as probably the worst campaign in the entire franchise in terms of single player. It added really nothing in terms of lore or character development. There was a huge buildup to introducing new Spartans like Locke in the Master Chief collection in cutscenes, and then there was almost no payoff with it at all in Halo 5, also with a marketing campaign that I would argue was extremely misleading. And what I'm getting to with all of this is Halo Infinite is coming out soon, 2021, before the end of the year, and it has to be good, right? This is the third time in a row that people will be upset and frustrated at this series if this isn't good. Yes, I loved Halo 4's story. I did. You know, but even I didn't really like Halo 5, and a lot of people didn't like 4 or 5. This is your third game in a supposed trilogy, if it even is that anymore, that it can't be divisive anymore, you know? And with the console wars crap, as much as I don't like it or care about it or think anyone else should, Halo was, like I said, one of those things that they brought to the table for Xbox and, you know, PC now too in a lot of ways, that was unique and interesting and had its own world and lore and massively dedicated fan base that was hugely into it. And I do think that Halo Infinite has the potential to be good. This, to me, has the potential to be Halo 1. I know a lot of people are like, what, what are you talking about? How could it be Halo 1? But if you look at the way that they presented it, it actually came out with a presentation today uh, over on the Halo channel and uh, other places, but on YouTube... When you look at how they presented the campaign overview, there is a lot more focus this time on freedom. 4 and 5 were so, so far up their own backside with trying to push dialogue that they needed to keep you almost in a corridor to do it. And that's a big problem I had with 4 and 5's design, despite liking 4, is that in a lot of ways, it's a hallway runner. You know, there's a lot of uh, run through a hallway, get to a room, run through a hallway, get to a room, run through a hallway that is a room. There's a lot of that stuff 
in those games that is very off-putting to a lot of people. I know I was talking to one of my friends, Chris, and his biggest issue with Halo 4 was one even I agree with, which was get interesting dialogue, then run and press a button, kill some stuff, press an R button. And I think that there was a lot too much of that sort of game design in the last few games that was off-putting to players. This time around, the campaign overview shows a much more wide-open world where Chief gets to explore, where he's going around rescuing some remnants of the UNSC military, and he is able to sort of be that last Spartan-type figure again. I think that one big issue with the Halo Extended Universe was if you can call it the extended universe, I guess the expanded canon, uh, the other stories around the main games, was that they started introducing a ton of other Spartans that were still alive. And that's fine, but one of the ways that the original Halo trilogy got around that was making the remaining Spartans very scattered. Once we got to Halo 4, there started being more and more Spartans being created, and it made Master Chief seem less and less important and less and less unique as a character, because there was always, you know, another team of Spartans there that could probably do the same thing that he can, at least to, in some regard, uh, together, although he can do it by himself because he's a badass, of course. Now, this game sort of goes back on that. The UNSC is fragmented, there is very little left of the troops from Earth, and Master Chief is kind of that last hope again, and he is actually exploring this entire world essentially on his own or with small pockets of survivors. This is the kind of Halo stuff that we had in Halo 1, right? Weirdly, even 2 and 3 actually went away from the very wide open areas quite a bit. Uh, Halo 1 was very focused on being on Halo and being in this wide open world that you did walk around on, you didn't summon vehicles or anything like that, but that you were exploring a little bit at a time and going through different areas and finding little outposts or little things and going through them. This seems to be reintroducing that to the series. Now, they do call it the New Age of Halo or New Era of Halo, I forget which, in the actual uh, in the actual campaign overview, but it really does look like it has the potential to be that. Now, they do introduce a new AI in this game, which I hope is an AI who is as uh, charming as Cortana in a lot of ways, but that's going to be a tall order to fill, you know, to replace one of your most iconic characters in your franchise with someone else. And I do wonder and hope if, I mean, I hope they eventually will re reintroduce Cortana in some way, uh, because I really do think that in a lot of ways she was sort of the other half of Master Chief, and there was a lot of really interesting character dynamics there too, with a, a romance uh, type thing where... You had this pretty uh, broken down and incapable of a lot of emotion soldier together with someone he technically couldn't touch, uh, who was an AI in his head, who you could tell he cared about and who cared about him other than just programming, right? And that relationship really developed over the course of the franchise. And to see that gone now is probably the most disappointing thing to me that I do hope returns. But what it does seem like does return in this is the iconic feeling of being Master Chief again, of affecting the universe around you, of being sort of the last hope for humanity. It, this game comes off in a lot of ways like the personification of the Believe campaign for Halo 3. And I haven't seen anything like that in a long time in terms of single player. Now, multiplayer, I think, is almost more concerning than the single player because of constant lo uh, loss of different, um, you know, staff, uh, different visions changing, repeatedly things being delayed out of the game. So, for example, things like Forge Mode and other, you know, modes that should be in multiplayer being sort of delayed until later. There's a lot with that stuff for multiplayer that's a little troublesome that I hope did not affect the campaign because I think that even the most disappointing Halo games were able to provide a fun and interesting multiplayer experience. I don't really think that's ever been a problem in this franchise. You know, so I'm not saying that doesn't matter, but that itself has never been the glaring issue with Halo as a franchise. What did become the glaring issue was the disconnect between 343 and portions of their fan base, people wanting and expecting different things than what they were getting and being very upset about it, and a lack of consistent 
marketing that was actually not misleading with the last game in particular. I think that this is Halo's big chance to come back. This is Halo's big chance to impress again and actually get people interested in playing Xbox for an exclusive game, right? And actually get them interested in a franchise that isn't some big Sony IP, uh, you know, like, let's be honest, Sony's always coming out with some kind of new exclusive. This is Microsoft's chance to impress and really come out swinging. And I really do hope they do. There's a lot of potential here that even seems to tie into the previous storyline with the Forerunners, uh, the Banished Covenant, and all kinds of stuff going on here. And it looks like it could be the biggest Halo game we've ever had. But being big as a game does not always mean that you will be quality. And it is very easy to fake a trailer and make something look better than it is. We even found that out years ago when they came out and said that the Halo 2 trailer or a gameplay demo was essentially on rails and that they had to redesign the area after that because of crashing after showing it on the show floor. So that's what I'm saying. You know, you can always see these things, uh, even the Uncharted's of the world, like Uncharted 2, where not bashing it, but they designed areas specifically for shows like E3 to show off the power of the engine and stuff. I think this looks impressive, but it's worth mentioning that there always is that chance that these showings online and at shows and stuff like that are just that. They're a show. So I really hope this is good. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you excited for Halo Infinite? Are you not? What are your thoughts on it? Maybe if you're a PlayStation person, would this ever make you want an Xbox? I don't know. I'm curious. I didn't say this at the beginning, but I have all three. You know, well, actually four, I guess, if you count the Switch. Uh, I have the three main systems and PC, and I enjoy all of them for different reasons. And Halo is one of the reasons, along with uh, enhanced games like AC3 and stuff like that, that I really wanted a Series X. So, interested to hear your thoughts down below. Please be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I appreciate you very, very much. And hey, we got all kinds of stuff going on in the background of the channel as well. We have a secondary channel, Degenerate Plays, where we play through a wide variety of games, hanging out with you guys and having a lot of fun. So we play through all kinds of games there. We do want to play Halo eventually. We have not gotten to it yet, but I hope to see you over there as well. And we do also have some side stuff going on too, such as my wife's business, Enchanted Glamour, which I also help work on, where she sells bracelets and jewelry for people of all ages. So hey, Christmas is coming up. So is Halloween, I suppose, very, very soon. You know, maybe you have a special loved person in your life or someone that you want to be a loved person. Or hey, like I've said before, even a victim. Don't tell me if it's that one, but maybe it is. I need the money. There's a lot of stuff over on Enchanted Glamour in our Etsy shop, which can really kind of scratch that itch, if you know what I'm saying. I also do want to say a big, huge thank you to Andre and Caleb, two of our patron supporters who are very, very awesome, along with, of course, Giving a bit of a shout out to some of our other patron subscribers like Michael, Ricardo, Seth, and Jonah. So thank you very much to our patrons today, and I hope you will also check that out. Have a fantastic day, and as always, everyone, stay shway.